Kendrick's lengthy and extensive federal investigation, uh, there were things that had to be done. Greetings. Say your name, please. Bobby Worthy. What organization? I'm Bobby Worthy. I'm national president for the Justice League United. I'm the minister of law and justice for the new Black Panther Party, and I'm also a national board member for the uh, the Black Man's the National Black Man's Movement, uh, chaired by Attorney Malik Zulu Shabazz. Uh, you also came from. Way across Georgia, right? Yes, I did. Uh, what, get, what what interest do you have in the Kendrick Johnson case? This lawsuit have been, you know, uh, finalizing the uh, allegations against the, the family. Well, the thing is, I think it, I have interest in, against injustice. The Johnson family got to be the strongest family in this country. They will not stop and not charging for justice for their son that they know and all of them know with murder. Now, I, what I witnessed in this courtroom today... Yeah, that, that was my main question, isn't it? What I witnessed in this courtroom was, first of all, a judge inattentive. Now, I'm going to be honest. I think the judge was fair. I think he was admirable. But the judge was inattentive when he went to sleep, not once, not twice, but three times and, almost, and one time at the end. Is that why you tried to get my attention? Uh, I didn't have a camera because of the situation, well, I'll explain later. Mm -hmm. But uh, you tried to get my attention to let me know that he was sleeping. Yes, I did. And I also notified all the other news teams that were him. Did you see, and all of them say, yes, we saw it. Did you see the judge that he was slept on, sleep on the bench? They say, yes, we did. Whether they're going to air that or not, but we know the ghetto free press going to air. My question to you is, do you think that there, was that done deliberately? So this afternoon it would, be, would not be a recording, a complete recording? We well, know we got a transcript, but that's not what I'm talking about. Well, my thing is the judge limited, limited, my opinion, I think the judge messed up when he limited because, you know, he does have discretion in the law to allow recordings. But once he allow one and don't allow the other, then he violates the freedom of the press. He violates the open meeting law. The judge, when I walked back in there, first thing he noticed was no media in there. And he said, well, we ain't going to have no media in there. That's, that's the first thing come out of his mouth. Are you it's, serious? He asked. He's asked, he said, well, no media came back, and I had, he said, I told them that I would let one other one come in if they didn't, nobody else show up, another one come in. Nobody's here. Y'all would agree with no media? And that's what he said. That's when I came down outside looking for you. Go ahead. I sent the media blast out to everybody when I find out about this. All the news media, <laughs> CNN, everybody, every local news station that I know, radio, at, uh, uh, Valos Daily Times, all of them, but Valos Daily Times was too. Though. But how can you, pr this is what I understand about the media. How can you come in here and view the beginning of the trial and not get the end? So you're going to go report an incomplete story and probably not going to be reported all half of it anyway. And just like I told her, I asked every media, ABC from Atlanta, I asked Channel 10 was here, and I even told you, George, uh, to get on free press. I said, did you see the judge sleep? Did you get it on that camera? She said, yes, I did. Whether she going to report that or not, that is very important. Very important. You cannot make a decision as a judge and you up there sleep. Let me ask you a question. Uh, just in case somebody else in the state of Georgia would like to call you for you to give more information about what you saw in this courtroom. If you reach me, call me at 912-424-0752. Again, that's 912-424-0752. Or hit my email, United at yahoo.com. One word, United at yahoo.com. Thank you very much. What's your name? My name is Reverend Larry D. O'Hara. Oh, what's your position or what title are you carry? Um, I'm the, um, well, I carry many titles, but as far as the NAACP, I'm the assistant president of the Waycross branch. Are you a minister of the gospel? Yes, I am. All right, uh, what do you think about what happened today? Even the judge sitting up there asleep from time to time. You saw him sleep too? Yes, and when he wake up, then somebody hollered an objection, and he don't know what the objection is. So then he turns around and asks, after the after the guy called the objection, you speak his speech. Then he turns around and asks Mr. King, and Mr. King just blooded out. He just go ahead on and beat. Every avenue that they came across today, they got whooped.
Why do you think that there was no camera in the courtroom? And the reason why they didn't want y'all in there with the camera, because every time they make a mistake, it's recorded on film, and they don't want to have to go back and use that. That is the same reason why, in the KJ case, why those films was um, tampered with, per se, because the evidence was already there. And they learned now that if it's on film, then they can use that film against them. What's your name? My name is Reverend Jeffrey Benoit. I'm the president of the Clayton Henry chapter of the National Action Network and a candidate for the 2016 state representative, District 76, which covers the Connolly, Fairview, Stockbridge, Forest Park, uh, Rex and Morrow in Rex, Georgia. Because uh, you are, you call the National Action Network. Who is over, who's the founder of that organization? That is, the founder is Reverend Al Sharpton, uh, who founded the National Action Network in 1991, so this is our 25th year. First, I want to ask Bobby, what did you say that you saw the judge doing in the courtroom today? Sleep. What did you say you see him? You saw him doing? Sleep. Did you see him? Oh, he was not. He was not, and at least three times that counted. I heard several other people, and I want to be on camera, that you all saw that. Now, how the judge is proving that, you know, that, you know, that he really don't want the cameras on the court. I, I mean, and I understand why, because the last trial he went to sleep four or five times, and this time he went to sleep four times, nodding on the bench, uh, was sleeping. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I mean, no one is saying about it. Even when the media was there the last time, you was the only one who reported that the judge was asleep. Right? He actually went to sleep, and nobody, nobody seems to see that's not a problem. Well, being a problem or not, uh, it seems to me, because if I had reported, I would let the people know what happened and took place in the courtroom. But it seemed that the local news media are not concerned about uh, judges uh, sleeping in the courtroom or, for that matter, even what's going on here today. Because, I mean, we had other things in the city that was going on, but this is a very high-profile uh, local, state, and national case. And yet, when it comes down to our television station, regardless of whatever happened in Valdosta, they wasn't here. Well, it's... Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, it's all support. To me, it's all supported by white supremacy. It's getting to the point that... Whites seem to think that everything runs around them. And it's getting worse with the police brutality. The, 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 we're, we're technically moving to a dictatorship.